I think it's now time for the Little Lunch author and illustrator webinar with the amazing and fabulous Mitch Vane and Danny Katz who we have here today. So um, a big welcome to both Danny and Mitch and to all of our schools that we have online, which I think we have a combination of from Western Australia, Melville Primary School. Welcome to you guys. Hey, Melville. I think from South Australia, we've got some schools coming in via the Facebook stream and some who are coming in via the Zoom um, video conferencing software, but we've got Samaritan College in Wyala. We've got the Adelaide West Special um, Education Centre. We've got Port Lincoln Primary School. We have Wakery Lutheran Primary School up near the Murray River in South Australia. We have Tumba Bay Area School um, near Port Lincoln. We've got Vale Park Primary School in Adelaide. We've got Investigator College in Victor oh, Harbour. They learn investigation. Investigation. A, I want to go to that school. I'm sure they well, haven't heard that They've joke got before. some great questions coming up for you, Danny, <laughs> oh, so just wait till you hear. We have St. Joseph's School in Murray Bridge, and we've got Flinders Park Primary School in Adelaide. Gilly Street Primary School in Adelaide. Gilly. We've got um, Solomon Town Primary School in Port Perry. Welcome to Solomon you guys. Town? Hello. I, Solomon. Is I don't think so. <laughs> and we have Blackwood Primary School also in Adelaide and Pinaroo Primary School, which I think is on the border of South Australia and Victoria. Pinaroo. So welcome to all of those schools throughout South Australia and Western Australia. We are delighted to have you for the webinar. I think we should head to some of our schools yes. to yes. get some questions. So I think, Danny, for number one, where uh, are we heading off to for question one? Oh, it's my favourite college, Investigator College. Why did you make up the series Little Lunch? Okay, so the question was, why did you, Danny, make up the series Little Lunch? The why did I make up the series Little Lunch? Like, how did it come about? Yeah, it was, look, I just wanted to, I was writing a newspaper column and I was writing for adults and I thought, wouldn't it be great to write for, uh, we just had kids, our yes. kids were like, they were at school, at they six were at or primary seven school, years yep. old and we thought, I thought, wouldn't it be great to write some kids stuff? Mitch was an illustrator working in kids books already, so I thought it's crazy that we're not working on a book together. Let's do something together. I'm doing newspaper, you're doing kids books. Let's fuse our brains into a mega brain and make some kids books together. So we thought what would be great to write about and we, it was what our own kids were experiencing, which was primary school, all the funny things that go on in primary school, all the crazy characters that you meet the funny teachers. So that's where Little Lunch started. Yeah, but actually to give them credit, Black Dog Books, which was a, a very small publishing company at the time said, Danny, got any ideas? And they actually were the ones that sort of sparked us off, really. That's true, I forgot about that. Yeah, <laughs> <They're> very important, <laughs> Black Dog Books, because they published our <coughs> series of Little Lunch. It wouldn't exist if they hadn't sort of said, have you got anything? Can you do something for us? And we want you to just go for it. No holes barred. Yeah, like that. just whatever you want, draw whatever you want. And it was such a wonderful way to start a, an idea. So that was credit to Black Dog. Thanks. And for those that haven't worked out when you spoke about your children. Oh, yeah, yeah. So for those oh. that don't know, Daddy I'm and Mitch. Married. Very cheap wedding ring. To Mitch. Plastic. <laughs> <laughs> just in case you weren't just aware. Just in case. Just no, in no, case. no, no, go back there. Go, go, no, back, back. Go on. <laughs> Sit in your corner. Okay, so this next one, question two. Um, Mitch, we might get you to Ooh, tell us okay. where, are we, where are we heading for question two. I think it's to both of you. This is for both of us, but <clears throat> this is from Darcy, uh, grade five at Melville Primary School in WA. Which little lunch book is your favourite? Ooh. Okay, so I'll just I'll read that one out again yeah. so everyone can hear. So the question from Darcy was, which Little Lunch book is your favourite? Right, so like a Little Lunch story, because each of the books have like three stories in them. So my favourite Little Lunch story is probably The Sandpit, which is uh, all about the kids going out to school, out into the playground at Little Lunch, and they go to the sand pit and they find a possum head just sitting in the sand pit. Just the head of a possum. And it's all, it, the whole story is about their reaction to it. So it's pretty disgusting. 
and it's it's kind of not a story you'd want to read just after lunch or a little lunch uh, but I really loved writing it because it's got all the different gooey bits that are hanging out of the <laughs> dead possum's head it, it when they made it into a TV show they they couldn't use that it was too disgusting so they changed the story slightly to I think Rory uh, finding a pine uh, it, the no, kids find a, a pine, a pine cone, cone that's right. that was Rory's Science school project, project and or, they thought it was a possum yeah. head. So, yeah, but so my that's original, how they got around it. The original was positively disgusting <laughs> and I, I love it. Yeah. My, actually, book, my favourite book was this one, which was the first one, um, because it was the first one, because this is where it all began. And also, and I which remember... which one is that, Mitch? This is Little Lunch, The Slide. Um, originally, it was just Little Lunch. Um, but when the TV series came out, they redid all the books and they put this now on TV. <laughs> so, uh, and they get, <laughs> and then uh, wrote the uh, this name of the story. But um, this was where it all began for me, where um, I created the characters for the first time and they were all here in the front. And it was the first time we were sort of, yeah, they came, they were born in this book. So for me, this is, this first book was, is the most special. So okay. there. Fantastic. Now our next question's from a school that unfortunately aren't are online at the moment, which is mm. Sturt Street oh. Community School in South Australia. But I'll ask their question, it's to Danny. Yeah. And it's how do you come up with the ideas for the stories, Danny? Based on real stories that our kids would tell us when they came home from school, and we'd say, how is your day at school, kids? <laughs> and they go, oh, whatever, go, go away. <laughs> and then we'd keep prying them, don't and eventually, speak to me. don't speak to me. And then eventually they'd break, and they'd reveal something, and they'd tell us about a funny thing that happened at school, like maybe the teacher went down the slide. They got their teacher to go down the slide, and the teacher had a very large bottom. So that was kind of funny, because their teacher sort of got a bit wedged halfway down the slide or the, uh, the kids going on the monkey bars and one of them got stuck on the monkey bars and another kid was coming the other way and they didn't want to let go and they were just stuck there for the whole of Little Lunch mm -hmm. just hanging on the monkey bars. And they were really small things. It wasn't like a UFO landed or there was yeah. an earthquake or anything yeah. crazy. They were just small little stories. Small but big. But to them, yeah. they were huge yeah. stories. Like when a caterpillar weed on their hand. You know, like that stuff like that. It's just, you remember that yeah, kind of do, stuff. Yeah, you do, you do. So uh, that, that inspired the story. So I thought, wow, if they're telling me this story with that much passion, I can remember being in a schoolyard when I was a kid, when I was a kid thinking exactly the same stuff about little things and something somebody said or feeling left out of a group when they're all playing a game. And so I incorporated all those things into the story. So it just felt like a real day a real ordinary day in a schoolyard. Fantastic. Now this next one is for you, Mitch. It's from me. So this is, oh, uh, this is from, it's from me this because I, I was interested at the start of the Little Lunch TV shows, someone appears to do this amazing Mr. Squiggle drawing that gives us a bit of an idea of what that episode might be about. My hand and, is a star. And I think Mitch might have a couple of examples yes. there. Do you want to explain okay. um, how you make those? Rich, how that's done. Um, so if you've seen the TV series, you'll um, remember at the beginning, they have, it's like, it's in fast action, but um, they have the red lines being drawn, and then another hand comes in and finishes the picture, which is my hand, it's a star. <laughs> um, but what they wanted that's to do... That's part of you, that yeah, hand. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to tie in the books with the TV series. So there was a link. So they got me to draw the opening credits. And it's also the style um, of drawing that's actually in the TV books that came out in conjunction with um, the series, which uh, ABC put out. Um, so what they did was they set up a big camera above the table and they set out a really big piece of paper and they told me the areas where my hand would come into the camera. So I had to keep very still. I couldn't lean forward because then my hair would flick under the camera. So it was, it was really hard because normally when I draw, I just do that. Whereas I had to have my back straight and I had to just put my hand in. And also what I had to do was recreate. So I had to draw this first so we knew what we were doing. Then the kids drew the red lines and then I had to finish the drawing. 
And, and so it was like, camera, action. And then I had to dip pen, draw the picture, and then they go, cut, and then it would be finish. So we did about three versions of each one. And um, it was really exciting, actually. The first couple of times I was a bit nervous and I had sweaty hands and I sort of mucked them up. And because it's pen and ink, sometimes it would splotch, but they kind of left all that in, it was lovely. And um, they filmed it in re real time and then they sped it up for the credits because they only had a certain amount of time. So um, say for example, the dress up day. So I had to pick out something in the story that was relevant. In this case, it was, um, what's the name Stretcho. of the arm? Stretcho. Stretcho, Stretcho arm and a little dog here. So it was something that hinted at the story that was gonna happen in the series. Uh, so it was really good fun and it gave me an opportunity to contribute to the to the series as well. And I know that some teachers have been using the uh, Mr. Squiggle drawings as an activity where they get kids to predict what they think the episode might be about ah. based on oh, really? Mitch's drawing. So if there's a so little there's chair here, teachers, yeah. little chair here, they'll think that's Rory's. That's okay. right. What could the story okay, be it. about? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Which, which might be a great idea for teachers watching out there. Our next uh, question, which is question five. So I think I might get you, Danny, to tell us where we're heading back to for question five. Oh, yeah, five. yeah. We're back at Melville. My old favourite school. How did you feel when your book series was turned into a TV series? Were you worried that they may not capture the characters correctly? Fantastic I'll, I'll read question. that one out again just to make sure everyone can yeah, hear. Yeah, that was really so good. So it's a terrific question by Jersey. It was, how did you feel when your book series was turned into a TV series? Were you worried they may not capture the characters correctly? I was. <laughs> I was very worried. Um, but I was involved in the... Um, in the development process so so at all times I sort of knew where the characters were and what where we were heading some of the characters couldn't be in the TV show because we have nine kids I think it's nine in the books but we couldn't the budget just wasn't big enough for all those kids in the TV show so we had to sort of smush make the cast smaller and we made some characters like a combination of other characters, so they were all yeah. smooshed together. We lost Amber. That was a bit sad. I like Amber, Amber was a was a winner. Bossy but, uh, Amber. She'll get a spin off. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, so it was just it was it was a fantastic feeling to see that all the characters, the integrity of all the characters, was kept, and they were Rory was still Rory, and Atticus was still Atticus, yeah. and we made sure that they were, you know, that they did the things that they were doing in the books. They're a little bit older than they are in the books. In the books, they're probably around third or fourth grade kids, but in the TV show, they're fifth and sixth grade. So they're just a little bit more mature and they have a slightly more sophisticated sense of humor, um, but they're still the same kids. So, so it was a really, it was quite a buzz. It was quite a buzz to see something you've written as words turn into something that a real human is acting on a screen. Uh, Amazing. Oh, it is. It's incredible. Yeah. And the success of the TV series, the fact that it's been so popular and so well liked, how does that make you feel? It's <laughs> terrible. We <laughs> hate it. No, we like it. It's a great feeling. And, um, you know, it's, it's just nice. We created a universe that uh, existed in a book, and now it's a universe that exists in t on TV, mm. on the internet, mm. you know, it's it's gone far and wide. It's in it's overseas, and other people are appreciating this silly little idea that started in my closet where I work, my yeah. little dirty. How many years room. ago? Nineteen. A long time ago. I don't even want to. Don't even. It'll blah. depress me. I'll start to weep. <laughs> um, but yeah. a very long time ago, a tiny little idea is born that turns into something mm. huge, mm. and that that's. Freaky. Mm. I bet. Mm. Freaky! It's a great question from Jersey, so thank you. That was a, a terrific one. Next one is also from Melville, but this is for you, Danny. Yeah. Uh, who are we heading to for question six? Who's asking that one? Lockie. Yeah. Have you always enjoyed writing? Any words of wisdom to budding writers? Um, I, I, I have always enjoyed writing. When you do it for a job, you have days where you don't enjoy writing, where you sit there and you really struggle, just like anybody 
to come up with an idea and you're just staring at a blank page and your brain is just numb and there's nothing coming out and you think, why am I even doing this? So I would lie if I say I always have enjoyed writing, but, I, but writing has always been something that I've, I've enjoyed doing. And, um, You're very disciplined. And you have to be very disciplined yeah. And it's a very lonely job because you can go like three or four days without talking to anybody because you're just in there doing your, doing your writing. Um, my words of wisdom to budding writers is uh, write. It's, there's, no, there's no real wisdom. You must write and then that's how you learn how to write. There's no one can teach you how to write. There's no books that you can go to or YouTube tutorials. You just start to write, and it's not always going to be good. Believe me, some of the stuff I write is atrocious. Yeah. She knows. Yeah. And nobody is ever going to see it <laughs> apart from her. Um, bin. Bin, bin, bin stuff. But the, you, you have to go through that whole process of writing rubbish to get to the good stuff. And I always call it the vomit draft. So when you write a story, just vomit it out <laughs> and just get it on the page. Don't think about it. Just get it on the page and then you can fix it up. Then you can turn the vomit into something like more like a fairy Yeah, you bread. started the... <laughs> turn it into a nice cake, a delicious cake. But you just cake. need to get, whenever you're writing, just get something down. Don't just write once upon a time. No, 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 no. Once. No, 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 no. One day, no, no, no. Just do it. And it won't look great, but it's there. And then you fix it up afterwards. But sometimes I think, you know, it's really important. I know with drawings, and I'm sure it is the same with writing. When you first do it, you think, oh, it's not good enough. You know, I never put anything in the bin. I just put it aside. And sometimes when I come back later in the day or the next day, I think, oh, actually, that isn't so bad. Yeah. I don't know whether you've ever written anything and thought, Oh, actually, actually, that's not bad. I'll take that piece and... Yeah, you put it aside and let it ferment like a smelly cheese. Oh, yeah. And could. it gets all sort of juicy <laughs> and pungent. Yeah. And then you come back yeah. to your cheese. Yeah. yeah. There's many... All, but all just comes down to one thing, whether you want to be a painter, a writer, a musician, or you want to do none of those things, or you're just interested in them, just do it. Yeah, just and be have engaged. Fun. Yep, turn up. Have fun. Yep. That's a great question, Lockie, so thank you for that one. Um, I think, Danny, I'll get you to perhaps cross over to this one, which is for question seven. We're yeah. heading back to... Investigator College, year three. How involved are you as writing in the show? That was a great question. It was how involved are you as writers in the TV show? Yeah, uh, I, I was pretty involved, um, so I wrote a, a few scripts. And there were a lot of scripts. There was 26 uh, scripts that needed to be written. So me and Robin Butler, who is the um, producer of the show, and a whole bunch of other writers, <coughs> we all got together in a gigantic room and we all came up with, with story ideas and character ideas and we just stretched the whole, teased the whole thing out. Um, so I, I was very involved with the writing and then after that, uh, I just left it to them. I don't know how to make television. I don't know anything about cameras or lights or anything. So Robin and Wayne just went ahead, cast it, shot it, and um, produced it, and and that's how the show became and a show. It, and if you yes. don't know who Robin and Wayne are, yeah. they're the producers and directors of the show. I know you probably can't see it, but they're Robin and Wayne are the producers, but also yes, directors. So yeah. Robin here in the pink hat, Robin Butler, Wayne Hope and their grist mill and they made uh, librarians, mm. Upper Middle Bogan and also all this series of Little Lunch. So they've infused their humour and their style on the show. So it's been amazing. And if you want to know what that photo was taken for, it's because the Little Lunch TV series won a very prestigious international award called the Prix Jeunesse Award Ooh. for the best well, look fiction at you with television your fancy show French. for Aww. seven to ten year olds. In other words, Little Lunch <laughs> is the best TV series in the world. Woohoo! That's what that award was for. Yes, please. And why that photo was taken. <laughs> that was a great yeah. question, so thank you very much. I think we're staying in Investigator College. And Danny, there's another one, question eight for you. So, Investigator College, would you like to ask your next one for Danny? <laughs> 
Okay, so the question was, it was a great one, how do you go about making your characters so different? Okay, so I, I'm imagining you mean like um, the characters in the story, how you make them different so that they're not all just the same. And my secret is uh, to use characters that I, I know. So I use my own kids who are very different kids. I have a, we have a son and a we, daughter. Yep. And they're very different people, so I used a little bit of their, her, my daughter's character, I used a bit of my son's character, I used a bit of my friend's kids' characters, I used a bit of their friend's characters. So things that I like in people and that are, I find interesting, I'll use a little bit of that. Weird mannerisms that they may have or ways that they look or, or something that they always wear. So I just love watching people and and stealing, <laughs> stealing little bits of their soul. <laughs> but I think also, if you'll notice in every classroom, everyone's got a Rory, everyone's got a Tamara Noodle. I mean, there's a certain type of kid, isn't there, that you, you know, you know someone who's like these children. So I think what Danny's done really well is actually uh, represented a lot of types of, of, of school kids, your friends, you, whatever. So I think the nice thing about it is you can see a bit of yourself or your friends in all of those characters. And I think that's what makes it work. You know, it's, it's a familiar, yeah. Okay, that was a great question. Thank you for that one. Our next two are from Stewart Street Community School in Adelaide who unfortunately aren't online live. But hopefully you're watching this a little bit later on the ACTF YouTube Hi. channel. Hi for later. So their question is for both of you, I think. It's, do you have, to have a break between writing and illustrating each story? Or you just keep churning out the next one? Ooh. Ooh. Well, what would you do? Well, uh, writing kids' books is only a, a small part of what I do. So I write for, like, uh, newspapers and I write adult books and stuff. So when I'm not writing a little lunch story, I have to jump into another thing that's completely different. So it's kind of weird because you, you go from this little universe of wonderful little children and then suddenly you're writing comedy in the newspaper or I'm trying to write a book, um, you know, about our parenting, our, our funny, funny stories about our parenting. Uh, so I always have to have a break because I just have to, uh, to do my other, my other jobs as well. But if in a perfect world, I would love to just keep <laughs> keep writing little lunch stories and blah, 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 blah. I could I could churn them out because I remember my school days so well and I have so many ideas for stories from from those days and you know I remember my children's stories and you could just keep going I could just keep yeah. going forever because that's kids for you there's a million stories <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh I have um, I actually work very differently to Danny like he'll get up in the morning and just go straight away and he'll work really hard and solidly right through to the end of the day and then he'll stop. Whereas I'm a bit slower to start and I might stop for lunch or go and see a friend for lunch or something like that. I like to kind of have a head break. Um, but then I can just keep going and if um, sometimes I look up and it's dark because I've just lost track of the time. So once I get started, I could just probably keep going into the night if somebody didn't stop me. So. Um, I think everybody has a different way of working, but the idea is to, to pick your discipline and stick to it, work to what, how your body works best. You don't have to do it early in the morning. You know, if you work better in the afternoon, that's, that's when you do your best stuff. So I think that's, that's the easiest way to work it. Mitch is a vampire. I am. I can she works all night. just at night. <laughs> Halloween. And you're both working from home, is yeah. that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. how does that work in terms, do you have your own space? Or? Oh, we have to keep right away from each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, uh, you can't, I can't go near her. I have a studio out the back. She's, I get the best one. I get the garden studio. She's got a beautiful garden studio yeah. that's full of light and color and love. <laughs> and I work in what is possibly called a closet. Very close. And it's just small. You're and the vampire, cobwebs. actually. You don't even turn the light on sometimes. And I have to work near my wardrobe, and so my undies are there. Oh. Fantastic. We've just had a question come through from Solomon Town, um, and it's how long have you been writing books for? So I suppose it's to you, Danny. Yeah. And it's from Connor from Solomon Town. Good on Town. you, Connor. So thank you, hey, Connor, Connor, for your question. From Solomon Town. Um, I've been writing books since 
I was tw 30, I guess, 32 or I don't know. Before that, you were writing musicals. I was writing, I've always been writing something. So if I wasn't writing film scripts, I wanted to be a film director. And then I was writing songs because I wanted to be a songwriter. Then I was writing um, uh, musicals because I wanted to write musicals. Comedy. And I wrote comedy because I wanted to be a comedian. And then when I failed at all those things, <laughs> I found my, I found that I could write kids books. I don't know why kids books worked and those, all those other things didn't, but that's what I ended up doing. And uh, it came very naturally. I just felt I had the brain of a kid. So I could, I just could totally, you know, just remember what it was like to, to be at school and to be with friends and to be left out or to be left in or to be bullied or whatever. All those things just sort of came back very naturally. Actually, it's a good example of just, you know, have a go at everything and something will stick. You know, like if, if one thing doesn't work for you, just try something else. I mean, it's a great, um, you know. Yeah, just don't try musicals. <laughs> That's a dead end. Oi. <laughs> <laughs> And we've got a second question that's coming from uh, Solomon Town Primer as well. This one's from Seth. Um, why did you make Rory the bad kid? Or the bad? naughty or the naughty kid? Yeah, he's, he's not bad. He's not bad. He's not no. even naughty. Rory Rory was based on a real kid that uh, was in my daughter's class. Um, and he was he just had very little control of his behavior. But yeah. he was a lovely oh, kid and all the kids loved him. Even though he would bite the teacher <laughs> or he or would do... Cut a pigtail off. He cut a pigtail you know, off he a was, girl. He just, he would just have he explosions just, of energy and he couldn't control himself. But the but kids yeah, loved him. He yes. was lots of fun yeah, and yeah. we loved him. Yeah. We thought he was a really fun and kid. And he wasn't bad. He was, he was just kind of like a bit out there. And I think in every classroom there is an out there kid. And, I, don't, I think bad is, is not a great sort of um, uh, title, I think, because that actually makes it look like they're, that they're doing the wrong thing. They're actually not. They just, they just need kind of corolling, you know, like, what do you call it? Um, <laughs> you're, you, you're using corralling. big words, Mitch. Oh, I'm like a writer just, and just, I don't... Just controlling a little bit, you know, just, just sort of trim the edges a bit. Yeah. Of their behaviour. But, you know, and the thing about a kid like Rory is he makes things happen. You know, he's great to have around. They're really funny. He's creative. He you comes get up off with on ideas. their energy. And, yeah. you know, I think he's, I think Rory is probably one of my favourites. Good, good question. And obviously, yeah. passionate answer. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Great yeah. to hear. And look, you know, Very good question. I'm the first book. Rory's the first one out. He's the first one that's just come out of the classroom for a little lunch, you know. And that sort of sums him up. He's like, yeah. We love his energy. He's yeah. got good energy. Yeah. Okay, question 11. Uh, Mitch, I might get you to tell us where we're heading for question 11. Oh, yes. Which I think back Sweet over the Nullarbor. All right. Um, this is Sam. A grade five at Melville Primary School in WA. What other hobbies do you have and do these inspire you for ideas when writing or illustrating? What other hobbies do you have and do these inspire you for your ideas when writing or illustrating? I have no hobbies. <laughs> I'm very boring. Uh, I, have do. no, I don't. I don't have really? a hobby. What's a hobby that I have? I like to watch television. Yeah, watching movies. Uh, yeah, I do. I love movies. Like anything to do with movies, you ask the director or the year it was filmed. Or but I do need know. a hobby. I'm going to find does me the, a hobby. What's the trivia? The little triangle in uh, trivia. Um, Pink, the one, the entertainment one. Oh, in Trivial Pursuit. Trivial Pursuit. Yeah. He knows all the entertainment questions. Yeah, but it. I. I. I think I just love. Um, oh, I know what I love. I love cooking. Yeah. <laughs> I love cooking. It yeah. doesn't really help my writing. <laughs> But <laughs> I, just, I just do it. Um, what about you? Yeah. Um, well, uh, reading. I'm just a mad reader. I love reading and uh, always have. And I love going to movies. I just love that too. So look, anything to do with books and visual storytelling, I love. I love painting. So if I'm not doing children's books, um, I've got all these canvases in my studio behind me, so waiting for me to do something to them. So Mitch loves going yeah. to galleries. I love going to galleries. Everything <gasps> that Danny doesn't. <laughs> uh, yeah. So most of my hobbies sort of relate to what I do for a living. So I'm really lucky. Okay. Yeah. 
That's a great question. And we learn a little bit more about both of you. <laughs> by that one, one interesting, one not so much. <laughs> so the next one's also in Melville Primary. It's for Danny. Question 12. Who's yeah. asking that one? Okay. Danny? It's Walter. What age did you start writing and what age were you first published? What age did you start writing and what age were you first published? Okay. Ooh. So. Well, I started writing when I was probably your age. I think I was like third grade and I was writing, you know, My Trip to the Zoo, which was an incredible piece of work, I have to say. Uh, I only got a B for it. Um, Glenn Ludlow got an A and he couldn't even spell armadillo. What a jerk. How do you anyway, spell armadillo, Denny? Don't do this to me. Um, so I was, I, I was always writing. I, I think I wrote a diary from from when I was like uh, seven or eight, I would write a, I wrote a diary and every, every single diary entry was, woke up, went to school, came home, watched TV, mucked around, sleep. It just pages and pages <laughs> of the same thing, but I wrote it every day. And, uh, and then every now and then there was something amazing happened. It would be, it woke up, went to school, mucked around, mum gave birth to a new baby sister, watch TV, <laughs> sleep. Um, so, um, so I just, I was just always writing stuff and writing plays and, and writing comedy sketches and stuff. And then I think that I, I got published when I was um, in my thirties or no, I guess the first newspaper column. So when I started writing my newspaper yeah. column, I write newspaper columns in the Sydney Morning Herald and the Age newspaper. And, that was exciting. Um, and then I got published yeah. in the newspaper and that was when I started becoming a professional writer. Okay, we're heading to Investigator College in Victor Harbour, South Australia, uh, year three. How much are the actors in Little Lunch acting? How much of the acting is based on their own personalities? That, that is an outstanding question. Yeah, that's really mm. interesting. Um, did, uh, the, this is an interesting thing because this is what I don't know this, but this is what Robin and Wayne told me when they were looking for the cast for Little Lunch was that young kids, you have to cast a kid who's very much like the real character. So you can't just cast a kid and say, oh, you're going to be uh, Rory, you're going to be a, a loudmouth Rory because yeah. if the kid's shy, it won't come through. Mm -hmm. So it's not like when adults act and they can actually transform themselves and a shy adult can play a, a loud, crazy person. So with kids, I think you have to actually cast kids who are very similar to the real characters. So they really were, when we met them, they really were the characters. Oh, it was freaky. It was, it was so like, freaky. Oh my God, that's Tamara. Yeah, you know, Tamara Noodle. It was like, she'd just stand there talking, doing like some gym pose while she was talking, like without even thinking, which was completely Tamara Noodle. And Melanie yeah. was really sweet and, and, sh and quiet, mm -hmm. and uh, Rory was kind of crazy and, and funny and, yeah. and uh, in your face. And O'Sheen, who played... Um, Batty. Batty. Who was, played Batty, yeah. was very... He was always just sort of slightly dreamy. And he'd and, sit there making and things. And draw beautiful pictures while everyone yeah. else was eating lunch. He'd sit and be drawing a pirate ship or something. Yeah. So they really were the kids. Yeah. It was, um, they didn't them. look exactly like the kids that Mitch drew, but that was sort of it didn't matter. irrelevant. It, no. They were the kids. No, it was lovely. Yeah. Great question. Yeah. It's a great question. Um, and I think for question 14, we're staying at Investigator College. How long does it take to prepare and film an episode? Three so days? Every two and a half days, I think, was yeah. the plan. Yeah. And I think when we had the cast in, who did the little lunch webinar earlier in the year, which is on the ACTF YouTube channel, if you'd like to listen to the cast talk, I yeah. think they said, yeah, two episodes a week. A yes. week? Was, was, so okay. two and a yeah. half days for one episode. Right. Yeah, they had to yeah. really, so it, was, said, it yeah. was like a factory to yeah. get, those, Very quick. get those out. But let's not forget, because your great question says, how long did it prepare? So from the very start, like a script takes a long time to write That's because right. you write the script and it takes, it could take a week or two weeks and then the script goes away and then somebody, uh, Robin will have a look at the script and come back with corrections and then you have to write another draft and then maybe another draft before you can finally get there. And then there's all the props and stuff that have to be made and um, 
what else? There's like well, even on the day, you know, the the kids have to read the scripts. They have to sort of rehearse it. They set up the cameras and they'll say their lines and maybe one or two times. They have a a, a script prompter who. Um, helps them with inflections, so if they're sort of saying the line in a, in not quite the right way. Um, so the preparation, even before they say shoot, you know, shoot the actual footage, is quite lengthy as well. So um, it's a really interesting process and very kind of, um, yeah, very detailed, Yeah, there's, there's no time to muck around. You don't just go bang, we're shooting it now. Um, but mind you, the Little Lunch app, um, I don't know if any of you have tried filming your own Little Lunch episode, but the app's fantastic. And that sort of um, gives you an idea of the process in a really simplified form though. So if any of you haven't had a go, I'd, I'd strongly advise that. It's a lot of fun and it'll give you more of an idea of how they created the, the TV show. And for those teachers watching, if you haven't heard about the Little Lunch app, it's free and it's available for iPad and for Android and you can download it from the App Store or Google Play. And you can create your own episode yeah, of it's Little really Lunch. Good fun. And as uh, as Mitch said, it actually scaffolds it in a way that is really great for storytelling. So yeah. if you haven't checked out Little Lunch app, go do check it out. Yeah, do check it out. It. Um, we've just had a great question come through from Tumba Bay Area School from Nick in Tumba Bay. So I don't know whether we can cross to Tumba Bay or not, Nick. You whether you want to ask your question directly to us. Otherwise, I'm happy to read out. Next question. Do we have Tumba Bay online? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Hi, guys. How long does it take to to write a book or to make a book of Little Lunch, for oh, example? Oh, it's, it's, it varies, Nick. Uh, sometimes a, a story comes out very quickly and it's just bleh, and you think, wow, that's not bad. Just got to sand the edges, smooth it up a bit. And sometimes it's a real struggle because you might have a story two stories actually that you're trying to smush into one or uh, a character you're trying to make a character do what a character wouldn't normally do and it just doesn't feel natural and it's not it's not flowing and then you have to sort of put it away let it ferment like a pungent cheese and then come back to it later and then go and you look at it fresh with fresh eyes and you go ah oh, that's why that wasn't working uh, such and 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 rewrite it again and it, that may hopefully solve your problem but sometimes it doesn't so it does vary and and a story can take I'm serious about this can take two hours to just write and then it's done and you think that was just too easy it freaks me out uh, and then other times a story can take maybe two weeks of just struggling sometimes lying in bed awake at night thinking how can I make this story work it's not working yeah. so yeah many different time lengths okay thank you for that question it was a great one from Nick we've had another question come through from Samaritan College so I don't know whether we can cross over to Samaritan College but if you uh, are yeah. there, there they are hi guys hi great Samaritan I'm just wondering, did you have any teachers that inspired you to be an artist or an author from when you were at school? That's a great question. Yeah, well, actually, um, in the last uh, seminar, webinar we did, um, I actually did mention that I had a, it wasn't just my mum, it was a great teacher at school, an art teacher, who, um, who was responsible for making me think is just scribbling for fun as a side thing. Um, to actually think about doing it as a career. And she was very passionate and um, I ended up babysitting her children and she used to sort of bring me things in and say, oh, look at this, what do you think of this? And have a go at this style. And um, so my art teacher was definitely very instrumental in making me think about it, not just as a fun thing, just as a, as a, as a career, as something I could do once I left school. So yes, teachers, um, if you get a good teacher, it can make or it make a difference in your life and what direction you might go, I think. And librarians, very underrated librarians. And canteen people. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Danny? Did uh, you have a teacher? I, I did. I had an inspirational teacher, and his name was Greg Smith, and he taught me English in high school. And he was the not only the English teacher, but he was the football coach. And so we were all slightly terrified of him because he was built like muscles and, and yet he would read us Shakespeare and, and poetry. And he was so fascinating and we all 
And it was a rough school, and we were all just silent in his class and listening. And he never talked to me once, because I wasn't one of the football boys. I was a little bit nerdy, surprisingly. Surprise. Look at me now. I've really buffed up. Um, <laughs> but he, would, he never spoke to me all year. And at the end of the year, uh, he came up to me, and he just leaned over, and he said, I'm very proud of the work you're doing. And then he walked away. And that turned my life around. Um, one line. One line, and I did really well in English at, at high school, and I did very poorly in pretty much everything else, pretty much just because of Greg Smith. So, um... Doesn't take much. Thank you, Mr. Smith. <laughs> He's no longer with us. He's mm. gone away, but I, I often think of him. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, we've had another uh, question come through. I think Samaritan asked this one too, which was, how old are your children now? Are they still in school? Oh, this is what's weird is our children are quite old now. They're actually older than us. <laughs> yeah, we've just stayed the same age. We've stayed the same <laughs> age. And they're just getting older and older. They're like our parents now. It's weird. Now. Uh, our kids now, I don't want to even talk about how old our kids are because it's depressing, but they're, they're adults. Let's just put it that way. They're kid adults. Yeah. yeah but, um, One's doing, uh, well, actually, they both did film and TV, which is interesting that they're kind of in a similar kind of area. So, um, but they're all grown up. They've left school. They've finished uni. And they still read the little lunch books <laughs> for entertainment. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, we might jump to question 17. So maybe, Danny, do you want to tell oh, yeah. us where are we heading back to for question 17? We're back at Melville. Woo! I think it's Jasper. It is, is it? Jasper. Hi, Jasper. Let's hear your question. What character do you relate yourself to the most? <laughs> Great question. So Casper asked, what character in Little Lunch do you relate to yourself the most? Yeah. The um, my character that I love the most, or I relate to the most, is uh, Batty. Because he's very creative and he likes to, he doesn't mind being alone. He doesn't have to be playing the games or, st or, or or being the center of attention. He's not a team player. He's not a team player, but he's also quite comfortable just in his own skin. Mm -hmm. And and I love just having time on my own, and that's the nature of being a writer, is you do spend little too much time all alone with your pen and paper or your computer. Uh, so he's kind of based on me, really. When I wrote him, I was thinking about myself. Uh, but he's, he's, a, yeah, he's a good guy. He's the best. Yeah. Um, Deborah Jo Wu, who is a bit different in the TV series, but in the book, um, she's sort of the arty one, and she's always drawing pictures, and um, she's quite sweet, but not if you use her pencils. And I, I was a bit like that at school. If somebody borrowed my Derwent pencils, I'd get really cranky. So um, I sort of identify with her because um, she's just always drawing and scribbling, and she cares about what she wears. and. Yeah, so that she's probably closer to my personality type. Just a little bit scary. Just a Just little bit a scary. Just a little bit. Thank you, Jasper. That was a great question. <laughs> um, I think, Mitch, for question 18, whereabouts are we heading for that one? We are going to um, Investigator College, Victor Harbour, South Australia, Year 3. Hello! Hello. Okay, that question, I think, was do the students that are acting a little lunch go to the same school in real life. Yeah, it would be great if they did. Yeah, really I bet cute. they want to, because some of them are still friends, they just, they still hang out together. But they're, but they're just actors, so they came from all different places and they were, they auditioned, um, you know, so they're from all around, I think mostly Melbourne, Melbourne or yeah, Victoria Melbourne, maybe yeah. even, yeah. Uh, and Robin and Wayne, the, the, film, the, the show makers, went around to all different schools and and audition lots of different kids. So, but they all became really good friends. Yeah, but and they I, did shoot it in um, the primary school in Victoria, in St Kilda Road, St Kilda Primary. And Robin and Wayne's uh, daughter was going there at the time, and they had a like they've got a crazy great um, uh, headmistress. So, um, she let them use the school, and so most of the kids in the background and the extras, they're actual real students that go to that school. 
and the six actors, the little lunch actors who did the webinar, as I said earlier mm. uh, in the year, that you can watch on the ACTF YouTube channel, they, I think, apart from Tamara, who was Olivia, who was, I think, a year older, yes. when they filmed it, they were in Year 5 right. at their real school yes. when they filmed the yes. first series of Little Lunch, so they were the same age as the characters. Yeah. In yes, they were. Tamara, yeah. I think, was one year older That's and she right. was in Grade 6 or Year 6. Um, so and they, they had a teacher on set, yep. so they do their classes. They had special rooms, and they'd all have to do their classes, and they Between had teachers the up shoots, on the walls. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So because yeah. there were a lot of hours where they'd be waiting to do their next scene, and um, and they were missing a bit of school, so that was the whole uh, deal. They had a, a full time teacher on set, Jenny, who was wonderful. I think it was Jenny, and um, yeah. So they all adored her, and they they did their but, classes. So in a funny kind of way, they were at school together. Yeah. Because was, yeah, between the, sh the setups of the shots, they had to go and sit down and do normal sc yeah. schoolroom classes yeah. in, a, in a little portable. Yeah. A question from me. Both the books and the TV series have been so successful and so well liked, even loved by people. And not just kids, but also adults have loved the books and the TV series. Why do you think that is? Um, I. I Obviously, it's about the schoolyard. It's it. We all have fond memories of primary school. We don't all have fond memories of high school, but we all have fond <laughs> memories of primary school. And um, I think it takes you back there. And the characters are timeless. There was always Rory's. There were always Tamara's. There were always Atticus's. Um, and. Uh, when you're at school, you know those kids. You may be one of those little lunch kids. Everybody can relate to one character. And we also made sure when we made the TV show that the school that we used was an old style school. So it felt familiar to everybody, whether you're 90 years old or you're, you know, just starting out school at the age of six. So it's, it's sort of, I guess the word is uh, sort of universal. It, you know, everybody can relate to it. Mitch, yeah. what about for you? Well, um, yeah, I mean, I think Danny sort of summed it up pretty well. I think um, the things that I remember about school that I feel really strongly about, it was the, you know, the flagpole. Because um, uh, when I went to school, we, we actually raised the flag and sang God Save the Queen. And But, you know, at the time it was like, meh. But, uh, like thinking back, it was actually a really nice ritual. And the fact that there is a flagpole in this school and all those little triggers are things that, you know, when you, you look back on your school days, you'll remember sort of certain things. You know, you'll remember when your friend that is like Rory did this at little lunch or... Um, so I think the really nice thing about these stories is, one, you can identify with them with your own friends and yourself. And two, when you look back on school, you know, these will be really lovely memories for you as kids. And also know? it's very important that in all the stories that we wrote, there was nothing about Pokemon or there was nothing about new TV shows that everyone was watching. It's just about life that is... And imagination. Life yeah. and imagination yeah. that whether it's at a, on, in a sand pit or two friends just talking and eating their lunch. You know, these things are things that have always existed. It's timeless, yep. yeah. Uh, so we yeah. really want to make sure that it was, there w it, it was not set in a particular time. It could be any time at all. So thank you to everyone, and we hope you enjoyed the Little Lunch author and illustrator webinar. Until next time, Woo! goodbye. Okay, well, I think it's just after 12 o'clock here in Melbourne at the Australian Children's Television Foundation, and I would like to welcome all of our schools from around Australia to the Little Lunch Author and Illustrator webinar with the fabulous Mitch Vane and the amazing Danny Katz, who are here today to answer the wonderful questions that have been sent in by schools right across the country. We'd like to welcome the schools that are coming in via the Zoom video conferencing software. So hello to everyone who's... Um, who's watching and listening via Zoom. We also have schools coming through our Facebook stream. So welcome to those schools and teachers and people from around the country watching it on Facebook. And also, there's probably some of you who are watching this later after the live event up on the ACTF YouTube channel. 
So to all of you, it's um, great to have you on board and we're looking forward to a really great chat with Danny and Mitch. Yeah. Again, I want to welcome Mitch and I want to welcome Danny Hello. Cheers. to the Australian Children's Television Foundation here in Fitzroy in Melbourne and we're delighted to have them in. All right, our first question, this one's for you, Danny, and it's oh. from Lily, who's from Mount Canwery Public School in uh, New South Wales. Yeah. And Lily's question for you was, what was your inspiration for the Little Lunch books for the series? The Little Lunch books. The inspiration, well, first we have to get one major thing out of the way, is that we, are in love! <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. No, I can't stop. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, we're we're a, a married couple. We, um, we met a long time ago. Kids were in primary school. They used to come home and tell us amazing stories about what they did at Little Lunch. They called it Little Lunch. You may call it Play Lunch or Recess or, or like some fancy schools I've been to, coffee break, <laughs> where they have like a barista working in the corner. Anyway, um, so they would tell us about all the funny things that happened, and they were, they were small things. So they were like, um, you know, getting stuck on the monkey bars or something weird that they found in the sand pit, and they were such cute stories. Just but, over the years, they just accumulated all these wonderful little dramas that happened at recess or lunchtime. And um, I think when they, we were asked to do the book, they just popped out of Danny's head. They were just there waiting uh, to come out, really. So they, they're based on our life, our children, our children's friends, our, our children's school, you know, so... Yeah, so yeah. it came out of a, a very real place. Mm. And, um, and because the kids, when they would tell us about their day at school, they were so passionate about the stuff that happened. It was just, it, it, we got passionate about the ideas yeah. and, okay. and they became stories. So it's very personal then. It's, really oh, it's very personal. It's our life in a yeah. way. Yeah, it's our family. We love we love the little lunches. Very dear to our hearts. Fantastic. So thank you to Lily from Mount Canwery Public School for that question. Yeah, thanks we're, Lily. We're now going to head down here in Victoria um, for question two. I might ask Mitch, where are we heading for question two? Well, question two is from Josh uh, from Point Cook uh, Primary College in Victoria. What was the first book, first book that you wrote and illustrated together? Uh, Great it, question. Yeah, well, it wasn't Little Lunch, was it? It was not Little Lunch. It was a chapter reader. Yes. Uh, possibly a character Smart called Alec. Smart Alec. Smart Alec. Who's a which we loved. Yes. Who is? She thinks she knows everything, and she's quite feisty. She was a great character, actually. Very obnoxious. Yeah. Yes, a yeah. little bit obnoxious, but you know, still had great ideas. So a smart Alec with a C. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I think there was a second part maybe, Josh, to, that uh, you had a question, was how long does it take to write and illustrate a book? So for mm -hmm. the two of you working on that first one, how long did it take to put all of that together? Well, obviously there's the think tank, which is, you know, you sit down and throwing ideas around and come up with the best sort of scenario. And then Danny goes away and writes maybe just a, a rough outline or a synopsis. Um, we discuss the characters, that sort of thing. But then how long would it take you to write, Look, say, it, a reader or... Josh, I have, we have to be honest. This is the criminal thing <laughs> about the writer-illustrator collaboration is that the writer works for a very small amount of time because it just comes pouring out and you just write it down very quickly. But the poor illustrator... Not poor, I love it. It's a good job. ...has to work for weeks and draw and, and draft. And, and so the writer, because it's just words, you know... Never uh, but, just words. But the, yes, it is, it is a bit unfair in time. Say if it took three months to finish the book, I think maybe a lot of that is the drawing stage because it goes back and forward to the publisher and... That has to be approved and then we change things. So yeah, the drawing stage does take a little bit longer than the, the writing. And the pictures have to be worked in with the text. Yeah. So the text yeah. exists uh, and it must exist just as it is. And then the yeah. pictures have to be worked in so you have to move the text yeah. or you have to work out when you turn the page. Um, yeah. It needs to have a picture on the other side that corresponds with the text. So it actually yeah. gets very complicated yeah. for where the pictures are arranged 
and how the text is arranged around the pictures. Yeah, very much so. So that's the time thing. And then it has to get printed and all that sort of stuff as well. So I might start drawing in January and you don't see the book till the end of the year or the year after sometimes. Now, Danny, for question three, we're heading off, I think, to South Australia. Can you tell us where In we're South heading Australia, to? In South Australia, I was born, <laughs> heave away, haul away. Um, okay. okay, the question is from Alex, uh, Enrico, Patrick, and Alvin. It's a four-person question. I love it. Year six at Norwood Primary School, South Australia. How did you create the character's personality? Good question. Oh, nice. Excellent question. Uh, like a couple of questions before, because it was based on our own children's existences, <laughs> they're partly based around our own children's characters, our, their friends, but we, we would never just do it, obviously, because then we would get a lawsuit. Uh, but we, we sort of used elements... <laughs> we'd use elements... Of the different character, of different yeah. friends, it's of our own children, mix. hybrids. Hybrid mix of all of the children that were in the schoolyard mm -hmm. when our kids were going to school. Well, but that was a really Norwood. great question too. An yeah, incredible it a, question. It was a really good yeah. question. Whenever you're writing anything in your life, when you're writing creative stories, you use people that you know. Because otherwise, how can you write that character? Or you use elements of people that you know. Yeah. Uh, so whenever you're writing your stories, and you will write lots of stories in your school life and maybe after, um, it's great to just sort of think, oh, I really like that quality in that person, or, or my dad said a funny thing in a funny way, I'm going to sort of use that. And that's how I do all my writing. I listen to funny things or interesting things that people say, and I, and I create characters out of those, those things. Yeah, so. yeah. If it comes from the heart or from your life, it takes on more meaning, I think, than if you just invent right. it. So, and it. And it feels honest. Yeah. Honesty. Yeah. Number one. Honesty. <laughs> Fantastic. Now for question four, which I think is from Warwick Primary School. So I think we're crossing to, uh, and this is for both of you, I think, this question. We're crossing, it's grade five and six from Warwick Primary School. So if you guys like to head up and ask your question, that'd be great. Hi there, guys. Hi, Warwick. Did you have a favourite author? when you were younger? Good question, and well asked. Yes, so you, shall I go first? I think you must. Well, the, the first one I can actually remember was Enid Blyton, which is, she's a bit sort of um, old fashioned now, but at the time she used to write about adventures and like the famous five and the secret seven, and I just, I just loved it so much. I read all of them, and I wanted to be one of the five or one of the seven and drink ginger beer and, you know, no drink lashings of ginger lashings beer. of ginger beer. So uh, that's that was my favourite author when I was when I was young. Yeah. What about yours? Um, I had I had so many, but my I don't know why. Just first person who pops into my head is Dr. Seuss, and oh, you may yeah. still be reading Dr. Seuss yeah. now. He's yeah. just just amazing, timeless. timeless. I loved the rhymes. They were like little songs. His stories. And I loved his pictures, and they were so, they were like dreams. And the other person I really love is a, a guy named Richard Scarry, who did these fantastic books where he would, um, he would look at a whole city, and they would be all populated by animals. And the animals would be, like a cat family would work in the bakery, and a dog yeah. would be the policemen driving around. Yeah, very detailed, weren't they? Beautifully yeah, detailed, yeah, yeah. and yeah. I loved them. And what was so incredible was uh, around two years ago, for my birthday, Mitch got me an original Richard Scarry illustration yeah. Yeah. that we have hanging on our wall. Yeah, yeah. That which was, was a, yeah. best present best ever. Best present ever. Yeah. <laughs> so that was exciting. So we've got an original, and our kids grew up looking at Richard Scarry book as well. So it's kind of nice. Yeah. Very nice. Fantastic. Mm. And I think Warwick have a second follow-up question that's sort of on a similar theme. Mm. Do you guys want to ask that second question? What was your favourite book that you've read and why? Okay. So okay. What, well, so mine. What was your favourite book? Well, probably Charlotte's Web, um, which again people are still reading now, so that's another timeless one. And I think the reason why, because it was the first time I had a sense that you could make animals. Um, take on like human characteristics 
and like Wilbur and I cried and cried and cried at the end but it was a beautiful sort of emotion it wasn't you know tragic I just uh, it's the first time a book actually um, made me aware of animals as more than just just that sort of oh look a cute dog you know it gave them human qualities and and I could feel emotions through them and stuff so I think Charlotte's Web was probably really because every I always think of it as soon as someone says what was a favorite book it's it's there so yeah, that's mine. And it, and it's great to reread now it as is, an adult. Yeah, yeah, it, I think it's so. Still, yeah. It holds up. It's yeah, so beautifully, it's, it's simply written. And the way she used to weave her, words into her weave, that's just unbelievable. It just blew my mind. Uh, books that I loved. I loved so many books when I was a kid. I, I really, I can't pick one out because I just read a whole variety of, of different books. Mad comics. And mad <laughs> magazines. Oh, no, I know. Tintin. See. I loved Tintin. It's like a graphic novel. It's cartoons. If you ever can find a Tintin book in your library, go and find it, and it will it will classic transport you into a world of color, movement, and drama <laughs> and funniness. <laughs> Tintin. Yeah. Fantastic. Now for our next one, for question five, Mitch, which is for you. Oh, for me. Whereabouts are we crossing to for question five? Question five is uh, Melbourne Girls Grammar. Um, we don't have a name of the person asking no, the question. Grade, four, grade four from yeah. Melbourne Girls Grammar. Okay. Um, what, in, what inspired you to draw or illustrate? Well, um, well, my mum. Yeah, Danny, you're right. It's all him. It's all him. Uh, my mum was an, an artist, and she, when I was growing up. Uh, she was in a fashion illustrator. Before they used um, photographs in the newspaper, they used to get people to draw pictures of um, people in clothing to advertise the clothing. And she used to do Maya catalogues. And, and we used to model pyjamas and things for her while she was drawing them. So I think just from growing up, it, my, watching my mum draw, was, it was there. And also I had a really, really, really cool art teacher at school and um, I had a bit of a crush on her. I just thought she was brilliant. And she nurtured that um, love of art in me because up until, say, grade, I don't know, nine, year nine, I, didn't, I wasn't thinking of it as a career. I was just like scribbling and drawing on everything. And then she made me think of it, the bigger picture. So, um, but definitely my mum. I mean, it's in my DNA, I think. Okay, it's mm. a really good question. Yeah, it was a, yeah it's a great really question. Really good question. Now the next one's for you, Danny. We're crossing to where for question six. Hmm. Oh, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> We're going to Cairnley Park Primary School. Did I pronounce that right, Cairnley? Hey, yeah. so. hi. I did, How and you it's going? Aaron. What made you like writing? <laughs> it was so no. aggressive. What no, makes you great. like writing? It was definite, it wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what makes me like writing? I like writing because uh, I'm, uh, you can create a whole world in your head and write it on the page and nobody else interferes. There's nobody else going, I like to do it that way. Uh, well, maybe you should try it that way. Why have they got a funny voice? Because it's you. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you're the master of the universe. Aaron, it's an incredible feeling to be master of the universe. You decide how your character looks, what they sound like, where they go, uh, what happens to them. It's brilliant. And how many legs they have. How many legs. They could have <laughs> weird legs and a snouty wolf face. You can, you can yeah. anything. You yeah. are can in control. And that's what I love about writing. Yeah. Uh, so that answers your question, I hope. So it's from uh, Michaela, Michaela, who's in, I'm not sure which grade she's in, but she's from you, grades three to six from Mount Canwery Public School. She's in, in all South those Wales. grades. That's right. She's very so, clever. So her question was, what made you create a TV series based on the books? So maybe you want to explain how the TV series came about. Well, look, okay, it was, it was a slow process. When we did the um, Little Lunch books, we always sort of had in mind, wouldn't it be cool as an animated series? And um, even like, sort of like Lola and Charlie or just something kind of kooky and using my scribbly line. Um, and we actually were in 
we sort of tried to get it made as a as an animated series, and we had a pilot made, and but it was uh, animation is really expensive. It was difficult to get funding, and it just and the person who was kind of trying to do it for us sort of um, couldn't work out how to make it all happen. So it kind of didn't happen. Uh, and then uh, Robin uh, Butler and Wayne Hope, uh, who we knew um, as friends as well. Um, their daughter was mad about Little Lunch, and there's Robin there, and this is Wayne Hope here, and they have Gristmill, and they've done The Librarians and Upper Middle Bogans, so you might know them from that. They came to us with a suggestion which was a little bit out of the box. We hadn't thought about it, and they said, how about if it was like a, a mockumentary or a, a real-life Little Lunch? We sort of went... How? Mm. We went, how? How can it how? be done? Because we hadn't really thought that way before, but they were coming at it from a completely different angle. And they, we said, well, look, you know, to keep Little Lunch alive, because we love it so much, we thought, go for it, see what you can do. And look what they did. Amazing. And it's now being phenomenally successful yeah. all around the world. Yeah. All around yeah. the world. So, um, does that, have we... I think so. I think, I, I think we have. And we have a bit of a follow-up question. This one's for um, perhaps Mitch, you might want to say where we're heading for question eight. Question eight. So it's a bit of a follow-up around the TV series as well. So who are okay. we going to for question eight? All right. We have um, year six, uh, St James Brighton Primary School in Victoria. That's near where we live. Um, and it's for both of you. Were you involved with the TV series and how did you feel when it came out? Danny. Um, uh, we were involved with the TV series. Um, well, what was the first thing that had to be done? The first thing that had to be done was scripts. scripts. So the first thing that had to be done was scripts. And uh, so Robin and myself and a pack of other incredibly talented writers came up with some fantastic scripts. We had a lot of scripts. I think there's... 26, is it? Am I right? 26 episodes? 26 episodes. That's a yeah. lot of scripts. So we already had three times six stories from the books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we they had to come up with a whole lot of new stories. Yeah. 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 So we all so sat. a lot of writing. We had like a big uh, writer's room meeting. It was very cool. Mm. And then all these uh, other writers were there. And we all sat around big tables and we just threw ideas around for possible stories because... Like Mitch said, the books, there were only 15 stories that we could use from the books because that was all we had written. So we needed another, I can't do the maths, but more. <laughs> That's You're, your job. Ah, oh, you see. Okay, nice. Um, okay. So, um, so that, was, that was incredible. So we, we came up with all the scripts and we, we helped uh, develop the concept and, and you. I, I got to work. Um, we called it the Crafternooners. And because, as you can see on the set, it's like a real, um, a real schoolroom, and a, and it's in a real school. So they had to do a mock um, schoolroom, and so um, uh, there was about six of us, and we all over three or four days worked on making all of the things that the kids had made in the schoolroom. It was so much fun. Oh my god, I was in, I was in heaven. So we were making the boxes, everyone's boxes, and it had to have a Rory box and a. You know what kind of box would Deborah Jo have, and so it was personality based as well, and um, build things out of toilet rolls, and it, yeah, it was so that was oh that was so much fun. I want to really do that again. You very low levels <laughs> of uh, enjoyment. Joy. Yes, yeah. it's remedial. It was good though. It was fun. So. But the, the coolest thing, well, maybe not the coolest thing, but for me, that one of the coolest things Mitch did was she did the the. The, uh, oh, yes. The yeah. drawings at the start yeah, can, of the credits. You can hold that one. Um, so, to, to tie in the books uh, with the TV series, because obviously it's real, So, but the connection being, um, you remember in the beginning, there's, um, there's like the Mr. Squiggle thing where um, a hand draws two or three lines in red, and then I have to finish the drawing, a la Mr. Squiggle, and it introduces the chapter. So this one's the Milfar. Um, and the other tricky thing that I couldn't actually draw any of the characters in the TV series because some of them are a bit different to the ones in the books because they had to adapt them. Um, so I just, if I did draw kids, I made them back view or something non-specific. 
So that was really good fun. So you can, I don't know whether you can see it on the camera, but you can see there's the red line that the kids did and then I drew the rest. And there was a big camera set up above the pad um, and just those, the hand would come in and they go, ready, set, shoot, and I'd have to draw the picture all in one go. So we had about two or three goes at it. Sometimes I And they shoot it, it with a fast motion camera. Fast motion so camera. So it looks sped up. She wasn't yeah. really drawing at that speed. <laughs> She's good, yeah. but not that good. Yeah, but it was fun. So um, at first a, a, a kid would come in and they'd draw the, the squiggles. You'd leave it in place and then I'd come in and they'd and then I'd finish it. So that was fun. And the second part of their question, St James Brighton, was how did you guys feel when the series came out and the fact that now it's been so successful? Oh, so success. Loved, how do you feel now about that? It's, uh, it's an incredible feeling because it was um, probably 10 years of work from the day that we thought yeah. we want to yeah. get this up as a TV show and working through all the different l formats yeah. and animation yeah. and then live action. We never thought it would happen. We, we sort of had given up. We thought, okay, yeah. this is, we believe in this product, but we don't think it's going to happen. To, to, so to actually see it live in front of us with characters that looked very much like oh, we like imagined Rory in is our Rory. head. Rory is Seriously, Rory. Seriously, is Rory. And Tamara Noodle, like, uh, even though she doesn't look like her, she actually is Tamara Noodle. I mean, Olivia did such a great job. She's so unique and uh, out there and sporty. So, I mean, I think the casting of uh, the Little Lunch characters was really special for us because they encaptured the kids did such a great the job the kids were amazing they really and they make it they make it work because they were just right into it they got involved in the kind of character they were and they ran with it and um, so we're pretty delighted actually yeah it's an amazing thing all those years ago to be sitting in front of a computer and this is how I sit <laughs> to he sit does. in front of a computer <laughs> and write one day Rory went to the sandpit and then and one then, day... And then all these years later, to actually see Rory yeah. walking to the sandpit, yeah. played by an actor, shot beautifully, yeah. uh, it, was, it was pretty special. All right, we're back up to Warwick Primary School. Love Warwick Primary School. In Victoria, School. grade five, six. What is your favourite form of art to produce? Well, obviously, um, pen and ink I love. It's like the old-fashioned dip pen and ink, and it makes a lot of mess, but, God, it's so much fun. And... I think I like the um, the dangerous element to using pen and ink because if any of you have ever tried it, you know if you get one splotch wrong and it's just everywhere. But if you get it right, it looks fantastic. So, and look, whatever mistakes I make, I can clean with white out pen anyway. So I just love the scribbliness and the um, energy of a dip pen and ink. Um, but I think if I'm really wanting to just chill and go to a different place, I think painting um, with acrylics on canvas is there. my two great loves. Pen and ink, acrylic on canvas. Fantastic. Yeah. That's a great question. Yeah, I like that question. Now, we have another couple from St. James Brighton Primary for you, Mitch. So uh, there's actually two questions, so I'm not sure whether that one being asked was the first one or the second one. But the first one is, what is the process of illustrating stories at a lunch? Which you've already spoken a little bit about, Mitch, anyway. And the second question was, do you have any drawing tips for us? Okay, well, I mean, as an extension of what we were saying before, once Danny's written the stories, um, he'll give me the text. We might um, sit down and go through it together to think of funny gags and things like that, because Danny is really good at thinking um, f in visually funny ideas and then so it just sort of helps gives me some ideas um, and then I'll draw out the page shape so if you can see uh, if you pass me the book okay so if this is the book page like that I'll have really down small the whole all the number pages and just scribble how the text is going to be broken up and what picture might be funny with that text um, and that's what I send to the publisher, say, okay, this is my ideas. And they go, yeah, 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 go with it. And then I'll draw them on just a sheet of paper, pretty much like this, with pen and ink. And um, because I don't want to tighten up, I don't draw in the area. 
that I've got, I just wing it. And if it fits, it fits and I can move it around. Because once I start trying to draw in a space, I kind of tighten up. So I think that would be a tip for me from you is don't think too hard about what you're drawing. Um, just put some stuff on the page. Don't, don't think too hard. Just let it come out naturally because if you try too hard, sometimes that can tighten your style and you might, you know, it just might not come out with the same energy. When I'm doing talks with the kids and they're drawing pictures and characters um, in my sessions, I, I ban all uh, lead pencils with rubbers. They have to do it in black marker so that the mark you make on the page is the one that you're stuck with and then you have to work around it. And it's really great because some of my best drawings have come from my mistakes. So it's about um, just relax and just keep drawing and drawing and drawing because you know the more you draw, the better you get and the more ideas you have. So that would be and, my advice. And Mitch does this very cool thing where the pictures sometimes fall off the edge of the page. So instead of a, a head just being in the middle of the page yeah. as you expect, sometimes it's just half a head because <laughs> yeah. yeah. the kid is sort of peeking into the, yeah. the page and it's, it looks great. It's so really interesting. So it's kind of thinking outside the page, isn't it, really? So don't, don't necessarily limit yourself to the area, just go big. Yeah. Great advice. Yeah. Great advice. Um, our next question is for you, Danny. It's question 11. Ha ha. Where are we heading to <laughs> for question 11? We're, oh, back at Cairnley Park Primary School, Victoria, mate. <laughs> Nikki. Go. Hello, Nikki. Hi. Hi, Nikki. What's you can your ask your question. When did you start writing? I. I don't think there, I can't even think that there was a starting day. I think I was three months old <laughs> when I wrote my first novel. Um, I, I think I always loved writing and I was writing at, at, in second grade, third grade. I, was, I always liked, I wasn't very good at it, but I always remember I enjoyed writing and I would always put a huge amount of effort into my school um, stories if we had to do a creative writing story and I wrote a diary and I tried to write um, um, comic books at a very young age but I couldn't draw so it was it was sort of the pictures were terrible but I just loved telling stories I think it was just sort of built into me and it's built into everyone we're all storytellers and we all have stuff that we want to say and Writing is just a really easy way to do it. All you need is a pen and a paper or a it's laptop cheap. computer. It's cheap. It's very cheap. You don't need paint. Don't need brushes. <laughs> don't need a glass of water to clean your brush in. Mm. Just do 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 or do 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 Full stop. So do as much writing as you can because it's a great way of just expressing yourself. And then when you're older. Even if you don't, you're not a writer when you're older, you'll always look back at your writing and just think, oh, that's how I felt back then. You know, that, that, that takes me right back to when I was a kid. So it's useful. That's a great question, Nikki. So thank you for that one. All right, the next one where question 12 is for both of you. And I might get Mitch, you might want to tell us where we're heading for question 12. Question 12 is uh, Nicole. Uh, from, oh no, Nicole, Kuang, Jessica and Lockie, Year 6, Norwood Primary School in South Australia. Uh, I'm Lockie. Hi Lockie. Hi Lockie. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> My question is, what characters from Little Lunch are you most like? Mm, what characters from Little Lunch are the two of you most like? I think, well, obvious. Um, in the book, uh, it's Deborah Jo Wu, and I think the TV series kind of amalgamated Deborah Jo Wu into Melanie. Um, so, because Deborah Jo Deborah Jo Wu in the book is um, are the arty one and a bit of a fashionista, and she gets really cranky if people use her pencils. So I figure mm, it's probably me. Totally you. <laughs> You're scary sometimes. <laughs> Get out of my studio. Yeah. Yeah. And and me would be um, I think probably Batty, who um, completely Batty. <laughs> completely Batty, and <laughs> thanks. Oh. Uh, who is a bit of a dreamer, and doesn't mind just playing on his own. He doesn't need to be in a in a 
in a game or or hanging out with all the other kids. He's happy just to sit in the shelter shed and and just dream a bit and stare at the clouds and, or build some kind of little tower with pebbles or something like that. Uh, I still sit around a bit and build little towers with pebbles uh, on the weekend when the house is empty and I'm lonely. <laughs> So, so, so was Mr. Stretcho something that you thought of when you were younger? Actually, Dan? Mr. Stretcho is not in the book. Not in the book. Not in the book, okay. but Mr. Stretcho is completely in keeping with the baddie character. Mm. And Robin yeah. and Wayne came up with that idea yeah. that he had this obsession with this superhero with the stretchy, long stretchy arms. Um, but he would go into that much detail, like he'd really get into it. And, and, and The truth it, is, in the books, mm. he was really into Batman. But we couldn't we couldn't do it in the in the TV show because of copyright. Yeah. Uh, but he was into sort of sort so of he had superhero a Batman cape things, and things, yeah. you know, and a bit of an IT. He's always had always had a little Game Boy or something. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank yeah. you, the guys from Norwood. That was a terrific question. Thank you. Uh, the next one's one, and I think I found an interesting one. Oh, this is going to get uh, really and, fierce. And this is from St James Brighton again. So I might ask it for you guys, given we've had a little bit of trouble just picking up your mic. But it's a terrific question. It's for both of you. Question 13. How hard is it for you to work with each other? And did you argue sometimes when you were doing it all that? Well, strangely, no. But I'm the only time... Oh. oh. No, but the only time I think it got difficult for me is if um, I'd come back to Danny with the drawings I'd done uh, and... Every now and then again, oh, this is not working, or can you come up with something funnier? Or, and I think I'd get a little bit like, mm, you know, just annoyed. I this think. is good, Mitch, what? but could it be better? Exactly. <laughs> sort of and of course it useless. can, but nobody wants to be yeah. told to do but it again. But it's also, it's a completely useless kind of criticism because you're not actually saying how you make it better, just make it better. But it's your problem. Yeah, so we, we don't, didn't really argue actually, but maybe mild irritation if you made me do something again. We, we sort of, because we both work at home and we keep yeah. to our own distant corners of the house. Yeah. Mitch has got a beautiful studio, yeah. art studio in the backyard. So I go out, out the back and we I've don't got a, speak. And I've got a scungy little pantry <laughs> that I work in in the front. Yeah. And um, He works and in a cupboard. I do literally work Pretty in much. a cupboard. Pretty much. Yeah. And, um, we, uh, and we, we don't, we just sort of help each other. But we're not working together. Yeah, we don't interfere in the process. I think it's really important. We go off to our own space. We work up to the best of our ability, you know, uh, Danny with the stories, me with the pictures. We'll get together occasionally, but at the, when we feel like we're finished, and then we'll go, okay, is this working? What do we need here? Um, but very, very little contact during the working time. And also because we are a couple and we spend a lot of time together because we both work at home, I think it's really important to stay separate. So we don't stop and have a cup of tea or stop for lunch or we just, we go to our office during the day and then we'll come back together at the end of the day. So we very rarely kind of discuss it beyond the, the day, working day. And I think that saves us from arguing too much. Otherwise, you know, it'd be really, could be bad. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very sensible. I think very so. sensible way to work. Yes. yes. Uh, this is one that's just come in online, just in the last uh, five or ten minutes, from St Peter's Primary School. And it's, have you written a story about how the two of you met? That's the... I was stuck for a story. Kids will love the story of how yeah. the two of us met. Well, you it's, have actually it's written... It's so romantic. You've written a column about how we I've met. I've written a book. I actually wrote a book for grown-ups, <coughs> which you can read now. It's completely clean, um, which is called Spit the Dummy, which oh, is about yeah, yeah. how the two of us met and the first couple of years of having a baby together. Yeah, it's like a funny was, book, you know. It's a funny book about how bad we were as parents. I mean, he wrote a whole <laughs> chapter about poo. Can you believe yeah. it? Like different types of baby poo. Unbelievable. I could write a whole book Who about poo. Who else could poo? do that? So, um, yeah, so I guess, yeah, I guess you could, technically you have. I, I kind of yeah. have. Yeah. It's okay. a beautiful story. If we had six hours, I would totally <laughs> tell it to you and we yeah. would reenact it. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> okay, yeah. so thanks for St. Peter's for seeing that one through yeah, thanks, just St. Peter's. online. Uh, question 14. Uh, this is for both of you, but maybe Danny, do you want to tell us where we're heading for question yes, 14? Yes, yes, we're, we're back at Warwick. Why are there 
there's so many differences between the TV series and the books. Did you have a say in that? That, that is truly an excellent question. <laughs> so just to make sure everyone could hear it, it was why are there so many differences between the TV series and the books? Did you have a say in them? There's, there's a few things that happened uh, when, when you have to turn a, when you have to turn anything into another thing, whether it's a book into a TV show or a song into a movie or whatever, things have to change because they're com just different, they're different mediums. So um, the, the main thing with the book turning into a TV show is that there were a lot of characters in the book and just for budget reasons, we couldn't have all those characters in, in the TV show. So we had to sort of m compress. compress some characters. We kept some characters group, yeah. as they were, like Rory, Batty, um, uh, Melanie pretty much. But other characters were sort of mix, a mix of all the other characters. And like the twins, you know, they couldn't be regulars, um, you know. And yeah, I think we had to lose it's just, a couple. It's just practical, yeah. practical I mean, you reality. Know, obviously, of we would have loved all of them because um, we love all of them and they all, they were sort of a tight-knit group. But, you know, you have to be practical about it. And, and the yeah. other thing was, so that, that, was, that was totally cool. Weird, but cool. And we, and we were very happy with how it all developed because we felt that all the characters were in there in the end. And... Um, the other thing was that the characters, our characters in the Little Lunch books were written about our children, as we've said, and our children were really small, so they were third and fourth grade a level, yeah. and Actually, we, yeah, that's a good we had to make yeah. them slightly yeah. older, yeah. Uh, because that's what the network wanted, they wanted older kids. Uh, so when you do that, you change the style of the comedy, because the humor can be a little bit more sophisticated, and also you change the nature of the relationships. Because in the original books, all the boys and girls played together. They were all just, well, it didn't matter whether they were boys and girls, as third graders and fourth graders do, but when they get to fifth and sixth grade, something weird happens that where boys and girls sort of separate a little bit and there's some more sort of conflict between them. So in the, in the TV show, we felt, we, we saw that there was more possibilities for girl-boy differences yeah. and that changed the dynamics of the stories yeah. but yeah. really great question yeah, yeah. great question yeah it is and and, and it was an interesting um uh, dilemma for for everyone even the people that created the series how are we going to do this without compromising the original books um, so it was, yeah, it was a very interesting exercise. But the essence of the books were totally 100% yeah, captured in the, yeah, in the TV show. Yeah. yeah. So what is your favourite Little Lunch story and why? For um, both of you. My personal favourite Little Lunch story is The Sandpit. Uh, so this is the Little Lunch books uh, that I'm going to, not the TV show, but the Little Lunch books was, it was based on a true story that my son told me that happened to him at play lunch where he went to the sand pit with his friends at little lunch and there was a possum head. <laughs> the head of a possum was in the sand pit and all the kids just spent the entire little lunch trying to work out where the head came from, why the head was still there, um, what they should do with the head, uh, they, all these they buried the head, they, buried they the unburied head. the head. They, at some point, and this is really sickening, they played soccer with the head. Um, Not like soccer, soccer. They tapped it with their toe. But they played artistic soccer. Artistic license. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> that was um, one of my favourite stories because whenever I, I do tell that story at schools, whenever I read it al aloud, kids just love it because it's, it's a really yucky, yucky story. But it was too yucky for the network, and um, and we had to change. They they changed it. I think it's a pine cone. I think it's a pine. But it was a really clever way of getting around a, a difficult sort of situation. So they obviously couldn't have a real one, but they thought it might be a possum's head. But then it ended up being something Rory it was Rory's had pine cone concocted. Yeah. Project. So it was a, yeah. sort of a nice sort of uh, alternative to the gory original. But I, I love really, really weird an honest schoolyard story. So that's why I just love that story because it, yeah. it was just almost 100% yeah. real 
the way my son Jordy told me, and um, it was delightful yeah, yeah. to capture. <laughs> I mean, uh, mine was the monkey bars, uh, because I kind of liked the idea of that sort of, um, kind of a bit of a challenge, a drama, all happening on this monkey bar with the two of them, and Tamara being a bit sort of bullyish and saying, it's mine, and, and you know, Millie's just sort of hanging there. And it's like a cowboy movie. It was about, yeah, it was a bit of a cowboy sort of standoff thing. Um, and then her just thinking, nah, I want my hanky. I'm not, I'm not interested anymore. Um, so it was all, uh, it's about her sort of deciding what was important and it wasn't important to win. Uh, so she just let it all go. And then, and then Tamara sort of gets sick from <laughs> everything anyway. So I just kind of liked the simplicity of that and the actual story behind it saying, look, really, it's not worth it's sometimes it's not worth a battle. So, yeah, that's mine. Fantastic. I think we might jump to question 17. This is one for you, Mitch, and it's actually from a teacher. Um, where are we heading to for question 17? Uh, Mrs. DeLacy, hello. Year four, Canley Park Primary School in Victoria. I'm going to ask Ariane to ask my question for you. Oh, okay. okay. Hi, Ariane, wherever you are. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Do you prefer to draw in colour or monochrome? Oh, okay. Great question. That's a really good question, actually, because I was thinking about it the other day. When I'm doing my roughs, I just work uh, in black and white. Um, and What's a rough? Just explain what a rough oh, is. Oh, when I'm doing a rough sketch of the drawing. So just working out my ideas and I'll draw in ink and then I'll put some water on it and brush it off and, 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 and I'll fill it in, in. But I won't use colour yet because it's just a rough. And um, it's so much easier, you know, and I don't have to worry, oh, what colour is the jumper and what colour is the hair and what colour am I going to do the background? So I think um, even though colour is sort of more dramatic at the end, I think I like monochrome, really, just because it's less to think about and it's, it's, I love black and white. So yeah, that's my answer, okay. Mrs. De Lacy. <laughs> Who are we heading to at Point Cook for question twenty? Noya. Noya. Noya at have Point we, Cook. We've got Point Cook there. Would you guys like to ask your question, Noya? Hi, Noya. Yeah, you can ask Noya. Hello, hi. Hi. Hi there. Hi. Hi. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Is the story based on a real school? Well, it kind of is. Like we we said before, these are real stories. We all, you take the true story and then we sort of pulled, teased it out a bit and made it longer and made it sillier. And the teacher is sort of based on, Mrs. Goncha is based on a real teacher. And the schoolyard. And um, the schoolyard yeah. that Mitch South drew. Caulfield South Primary. Yes, Caulfield South Primary. The schoolyard was based on a yeah. real looking schoolyard. And um, yeah, that, that's how you, it's always good to, to take things that you know when you're writing or painting or making up music or whatever you do, um, take things that you know and then stretch them out and do anything you like with them. As long as the heart of it is true, it will, it will work out really well. And I think- I promise. Yeah, and because it was a public school and you know, everyone has bubblers and everyone has the, the toilet block and everyone has the oval. And so it kind of looks like everybody's school really, doesn't it? So even though it's that school, it's actually every school. Yeah, as are the kids, really, because, you know, in every school there's a Rory and there's a Tamara Noodle, and so it's kind of nice. It speaks to everyone. And for those that don't know, the Little Lights TV series is filmed at St Kilda Primary School, That's which is right. a primary school, a real primary school yeah. here in Melbourne. Yeah. Get that beautiful old building you oh, see, gorgeous. that's real. Yeah. And many of the kids you see when they're out in the yard are actually kids actually, that's, yeah, from St yeah. Kilda Primary School who are extras. Obviously there's the main actors uh, and there's a group of about, I think, 20 who play the rest in their class. Yeah. But when you see out in the yard and they're playing uh, football or netball or something, they're actually kids from they're, St Kilda Primary yeah. but School. But they're real kids, like they shot it, that the, they put up the set inside the school so that while little lunch or lunchtime was actually happening, they shot. So it's a real schoolyard. 
with kids running around and kids falling over. And, and after a while, they didn't even notice the cameras. They just they lost interest and they were just playing in the background. So they didn't really have to. Because um, it was six worry weeks of a yeah, very long right. shoot. Yeah, that's right. And it's funny because they had about uh, twelve regular extras, and their job would be in the background while the scene was being shot. Um, they'd be standing on the side and then somebody would go, okay, run across now. And then they'd have to run across in the background. Um, so they were sort of doing all that kind of stylized play. Um, and then there'd be the real kids in the distance doing real play. Like they were just having their little lunch and yeah. So it was kind of three layers of, of activity going on. Yeah. Okay, again, we've only got a minute or two to go. We did have a question come in from Hallam Primary School that asked, what would you both be doing if you weren't an author and illustrator? Wow. What other jobs do you think you might have done had you not ended up where you are now? Wow. Well, um, I don't really know. I wanted to be an air hostess when I was at school. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I really, I don't think I'd be doing that now though. Um, I just thought it was kind of romantic and you got to travel, but it's basically waitressing in the air. So I don't, I don't know whether I'd be doing it now because and also being in the air sort of makes me feel bad. So um, maybe I would be running a cafe gallery, I think. Oh, that's totally you. Yeah, I could do that now. A cafe <laughs> slash gallery slash bookstore. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, it. Oh, three let's, in one. Let's that's, make it that's happen. That's what I'll be doing. Yeah. I don't know what I'd do. I think I'd be unemployed and An really actor? sad. Yeah, I'd be a really good actor. No. Yeah, right. No, you want to be a film director. Oh, I want to be a customs officer. <laughs> <laughs> at the airport and just yeah. stick my hand into other people's dirty luggage <laughs> and no, their you old don't. underpants. That's weird. You're linked to me being an air hostess. We'll work together. There you, go. Yeah. you could get the sky bus out to the <laughs> airport right. each day and back. Yeah. It's no, too I reckon you want to be a film director. <laughs> yeah, whatever. That's his secret. <laughs> so we'd like to thank They're everyone, waiting. all of the schools, all of the fabulous questions that were asked, and thank you for being part of the Little Lunch Author and Illustrator webinar today with the very wonderful Mitch Vane and the fabulous Daddy Cats. And we'd like to thank you because you've made this a great day for us as well. Um, so Danny and Mitch, we've just finished the first of our Little Lunch Author and Illustrator webinars. Mm. You've had kids from all over the country fire questions of you. Mm. How do you feel that went? How, what was it like for you, Danny? Oh, yeah. kids are smart. Not as charming as me, but they were charming. And, um, and just really good questions. Like, you know, they thought about how the whole process works, how you write a book, how you draw in a book, how you make a TV show. They thought about all those, the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, really informed questions. It's great. Must be the teachers. Yeah. And I think in terms <laughs> of um, the depth of the questions they're asking, yeah, they weren't just yes. superficial That's right. questions. That's right. What sort of stood out for you in terms of one or two of the questions that you were asked? That you thought well, for me really as an artist, to be asked whether I prefer colour or drawing in colour or monochrome is just like, oh, my dream question, you know, because it's not something I get asked a lot. Um, it's usually something a bunch of illustrators would sit around talking about, hey, do you prefer black and yeah, white or colour? Was, you know, was totally like, yeah. <laughs> so that gallery. Yeah. yeah. How about you? They were all yeah. amazing questions, and yeah. I did like the questions about um, how the how the characters came about because I, you know, it is lovely to think that our kids, in a funny, crazy mm. kind of way, have mm. inspired our stories and mm. that um but and also that they still it just sort yeah. of exist for forever but also that they noticed that there were changes from the original books to the tv yeah. you know i like that that they observed that and noticed that there were differences and wanted to know about that i thought that was great it was really yeah and it seemed to come through that they have great affection for both the books yes as well as obviously the tv show yeah, that's how do you point. feel when you sense that level of affection and love <laughs> for the series. It's, it is. It's, it's really, really moving. It is. It's because yeah. we, you know, we've been writing these books for a really long and time. It's and it's our great love. So if people love what we love and what we created, man, yeah. you can't get better than and that, that. And that it has been transformed into a new medium and, and that new young kids are loving it in, in through television, you know, and that may bring them back around to the books. And, you know, so it just sort of, it just keeps rolling on. Yeah, and extends the shelf life of the books as well. You know, they're not going to be collecting dust in the corner. They're, they're there. So that's pretty special. So we're going to finish up and again say thank you so much to Danny, so much to Mitch, 
and to all of you out there. Yep, We've thanks. We've really had a great time and hopefully we'll see you next time when we run our next webinar here at the Australian Children's Television Foundation. I'd like to thank Lily as well, who's doing a wonderful job making sure you're all connecting via Zoom and we'll see you next time. So goodbye to everybody. Do a little hang -on.